Who is the church universal and triumphant, otherwise known as Cut and led by Elizabeth Clare Prophet? Welcome to our weekly Q&A uh, dealing with the Colts video materials. And um, on that note, uh, if I'm going to have an announcement at the end of this video that pertains to the future direction of this channel. So you want to stay tuned and not miss that. Um, so let's go ahead. Uh, a question I received a while back when I was uh, teaching at a, a winter retreat. And um, on the contents of my book, Sharing Jesus with the Colts, available on Amazon as paperback or Kindle, um, I was asked uh, by a, a number of people there if I've heard of this group cut, and I hadn't. And the reason why they were asking is this camp happened to be based just outside of Livingston, Montana, which happens to be very, very near the headquarters, um, or at least one of the ba main bases for this group. And years ago, uh, they caused quite a stir in that whole area. And so they were surprised because I was talking to them about uh, cults and, um, you know, basic, you know, grounding them in Christian doctrine and all this kind of stuff and how to share their faith and all these things. And they were surprised that I'd never heard of this. Well, you know, when something's local news and I, I don't come from Montana and I always, you know, I'm still fairly new here and um, I'm four hours away from this area where, uh, they were asking about then I, I somebody had mentioned this i think before but i figured i better actually dive in and find out uh, about this group and share it with you and so uh, so i went to their official website as well as some other places and uh, so it says on there on the official website since the summit lighthouse which is what it's now called was founded in 1958 by Mark L. Prophet under the sponsorship of the Ascended Masters. We'll get to that in a second. It has been our goal to bring liberation to all souls everywhere who seek spiritual freedom, to all those who sense their own innate divinity and wish to express and develop it. So, the Church Universal Triumphant 12 Tenets of Faith from their own mouth, from their own website, Foundation head and communicants of church universal and triumphant okay number two god christ and the soul okay so it looks like i'm gonna have to do another video because i didn't realize that these are all like links um i thought these were actually like a statement of faith here but this is all just going to take me to a totally separate link um for each one where we're going to have to dive into what is it that they actually believe but uh, the Church Universal and Triumphant is an international New Age religious organization founded in 1975 by Elizabeth Clare Prophet. So that's interesting that it talks about on their website, it says that they were founded in 1958 by Mark L. Prophet. And uh, the otherwise uh, people know them as being founded in 1975 by Elizabeth Clare Prophet. It is an outgrowth and is now corporate parent of the Summit Lighthouse. Founded in 1958. Okay, so there we go. There's the connection. The Summit Lighthouse is uh, was founded in 1958, and now that's kind of become engulfed in the Church Universal and Triumphant. Okay, uh, its beliefs reflect features of the traditions of Theosophy and New Thought, and we'll get to that in a second. Both of those. The church's headquarters are located near Gardner, Montana, and the church has local congregations in more than 20 countries. Theosophy is an esoteric religious movement established in the United States during the late 19th century. As taught by Blavatsky, Theosophy holds that there is an ancient and secretive brotherhood of spiritual adepts known as the Ascended Masters. So remember that term from their website? Who, although found across the world, are centered in Tibet. These masters are believed to have cultivated great wisdom and supernatural powers. So that's theosophy. And the New Thought Movement, also higher thought, is a religious movement which developed in the United States in the 19th century, considered by many to have been derived from the unpublished writings of Phineas Quimby. And if you've been watching any of my other videos, you might know that Phineas Quimby is a key figurehead, unintentionally, of a number of 
of really weird groups and cults that are out there. And so he's the father, seen as the father of New Thought Movement. He wrote a lot on metaphysics. And so there's two key figures um, that took his words. Uh, so one would be E.W. Kenyon, who is a leading figure in the Word of Faith movement. And then you have Mary Baker Eddy of the, 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 the mother of Christian science, the one who wrote Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures and who they believe is a prophet, a prophetess. Now, uh, many have shown that Mary Baker Eddy was greatly influenced by Phineas Quimby and that, in fact, she plagiarized a large amount of material from Mr. Quimby when she wrote Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures. And you can also see... Uh, the influence in the Word of Faith movement in regards to the belief that what uh, that in in Christian Science a little it's a little bit more blatant that sin and death and sickness is all an illusion, and that we just need to realize our potential and realize that and speak truth into a situation. But you can hear that those words that name it and claim it. Uh, belief that we bring things into existence in the Word of Faith movement and the whole Law of Attraction and Positive Confession movements, and a lot of it has to go back to this guy Quimby and his books on metaphysics and uh, becoming the father of new thought. So now we find out that he's the father of another false group, the Church Universal and Triumphant. And in fact, going on, uh, the name Church Universal and Triumphant was announced by Elizabeth Clare Prophet on July 2nd, 1973 in a message from the Ascended Master Portia. In 1895, Mary Baker Eddy used the terms universal and triumphant in her first church manual as referring to the church she founded. Hmm. In the 1903 edition of this work, she capitalized these terms referring to her church as the Church Universal and Triumphant. Wow, amazing, the, the, the overlap there. I wonder where that comes from. Uh, the church's theology is the syncretistic belief system, including elements of Buddhism, Christianity, esoteric mysticism, the paranormal, and alchemy. With the belief in angels and elementals or spirits of nature, it centers on communications received from ascended masters through the Holy Spirit. Hmm, ascended masters through the Holy Spirit. That's a convenient abuse of the Holy Spirit is kind of like the whole like God calling, Jesus calling stuff. You know, I'm channeling Jesus and he's writing through me kind of thing uh, that we got going on there. Many of the Ascended Masters such as Sanat Kumara, Maitreya, Dwajra Kul, El Moria, Kuthimi, Paul the Venetian, Serapis Bay, the Master Hilarion, the Master Jesus, and St. Germain have their roots in Theosophy and the writings of Madame Blavatsky, C.W. Ledbetter, and Alice A. Bailey. Others, such as Buddha and Confucius, are historical religious figures. Some, such as Lanto, Lady Master Nada, Lady Master Lotus, and Lanello, are ascended masters who were first identified as such by Elizabeth Clare Prophet. All in all, she identified more than 200 ascended masters that were not identified as masters of the ancient wisdom in the original teachings of Theosophy. Philosophy. Amazing. I wonder how you get all of those different Ascended Masters from all of those different backgrounds who founded sort way different religions. How do you get them to agree with one another? Maybe it's by just redefining their terms, kind of like Mary Baker Eddy did. Uh, Mark Prophet and later his wife claim to be messengers of the Ascended Masters. As such, they are able to communicate with the Masters and deliver their instruction to the world. This kind of reminds me, and I wonder, and I, I need to look into this and do a video on, uh, there's a guy on YouTube called The Messenger from God. Uh, and I've been anxious to dive into some of his stuff. And I also, there's another one that I found, it's called The Three Hearts Church. And so if any of you are curious about them or if you know anything about them, uh, please message me some links or information down in the comments down below. Uh, because... That especially that messenger from God guy, uh, he's weird. Okay, so I, I'm wondering if there's a connection there uh, somewhere along the line. As such, okay, 
Dictations described as coming directly from the masters were published weekly as pearls of wisdom. Group members practiced prayers, affirmations, mantras in a dynamic form of prayer known as decrees. These served many purposes devotion, calling on angels for protection, calling forth the light of God on the earth, praying for healing, for wisdom, seeking to know God's will, and for the transmutation of negative karma. One of the most important uses of decrees is to invoke the violent flame, violet flame, claimed to be the most effective method of balancing karma build up in the past. The doctrine of the seven rays is also taught, as well as teachings about the chakras and reincarnation. Wow. I don't even know how you would fit Jesus into a conversation about chakras and reincarnation, but um, that's going to be interesting to dive in next week into the whole uh, statement of faith that they mentioned. I mentioned before. Public scrutiny intensified in 1989 when it was discovered that the Church Universal and Triumphant was building fallout shelters and that members of the church, including Vernon Hamilton and Vice President and husband of Elizabeth Claire Prophet Edward Francis, had purchased weapons illegally. Cuts members weren't just making an overly paranoid security system, they were preparing for the end of the world, which Elizabeth had predicted would come on March 14, 1990. In the summer of 1993, a team of academic specialists conducted an interdisciplinary study of the church and its members. They published their results in Church Universal and Triumphant in Scholarly Perspective, edited by James R. Lewis and J. Gordon Melton. These scholars rejected the negative stereotype of the organization as a cult. Are you kidding me? Lewis characterized the organization and its leaders as one that was trying to do the good and is one of the most intrinsically interesting religious communities to have come into being in this century. Okay? Other scholars have cast doubt on these conclusions. No kidding. In recent years, several former members of the church have come forward claiming to deliver dictations from the Ascended Masters. Why not? I mean, leave the group, but continue on in their, their path. That's, that's good. Okay. In 1995, former minister Monroe Shearer and his wife Carolyn founded the Temple of the Presence, now based in Tucson, Arizona. In 2005, another former church official, David C. Lewis, set up his own his new Ascended Master Teachings group called the, the Heart Center. That's where I was kind of wondering about the Three Hearts Church, um, if there's a connection. But that might be something totally separate, which is based in Livingston, Montana. Hey, hometown, all right. Uh, Mark and Elizabeth Prophet both spoke about plans for future messengers to follow after them, and the organization has a mechanism by which future messengers may be recognized. However, no other claimant to the office of messenger has thus far been recognized by the church. Of course, you want to keep them dependent upon you. So that would be kind of silly. Let them know that they can potentially receive messages from the Ascended Master's personal revelation, but make sure that they understand that they are not the prophet. That is your role. So anyway, that's the Church Universal and Triumphant.